Now the Kia Nera has been on the market for a number of years. You could choose from hybrids and electric. Well this, this is the latest. The all new Kia Nero EV. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. Since the arrival of the Kia Nero, it's always been one of those dependable vehicles. I mean, for a start, it's been developed for UK roads, well, European roads, meaning it's the perfect size. It's agile, it's nimble, it's got a range of powertrains, well, it's perfect for a family. And also, it's got its audience. It's sold a fair few numbers since 2016. And that was the previous gen. This is the latest. So it's now on their third generation K platform and it just builds on everything. Now, the one thing that is the same is the powertrain. But to be perfectly frank, that was great. You used to get mile for mile. One of the only vehicles that I got in and thought, range anxiety, what's that? Compared to the previous gen, this is longer, it's wider and it's taller. It's got more space and it's got more tech. It's got more features and it's got more. I'm going to be saying more a lot. So the fact that it's now got the new design language, I mean, look at the curvature. That reminds me of Sorento. The fact that they've moved the charging port, the fact it's got more features. And the other thing is certain convenience and safety is across the whole range, including the adaptive cruise and stop go. And in case you're wondering, yes, the interior has changed too. And it looks far more well, EV6 and Sportage, which is a damn good thing. It's even got the dual screen. Now there's a range of trims to choose from. The two, the three and the four. This is a four, meaning we get things like a heads up display, heated rear seats, heated steering wheel. Now prices start at around 38,000 and that's for a two. If you go for say our four, well that'll cost you closer to 42. May even be closer to 43, dependent on what you do to it. For example, you can change the C-pillar colour. And that reminds me of the Audi R8. There's an air intake that runs all the way to the back. So that increases efficiency and helps the vehicle stay well, glued to the road. And it's not only that side of it they've tweaked. For example, you've got more direct linear steering. You've got faster safety systems. And you've got more advanced tech. Now, it wouldn't be an EV without us taking it on a mega road trip. So we took it down to Cardiff. So if you want to see how it acts on motorways, A roads and around city centres, take a look at that. Now Kia design language has always been on point, whether it's the sculpture, the curvature or even the positioning of certain features. I mean, just look at the headlamps. Yes, yeah, they do float one's boat. And they're LED, they're automatic and they've got high beam assist. I'm also a fan of these daytime running lights. I suppose it steps it into the future. It's done in a rather minimalist way, but the mix of colours and materials really makes it stand out. As you'd expect, it's tech loaded. Collision mitigation, and we saw that firsthand in the Sportage. Because it's got cameras and sensors all over the vehicle, it can tell when something's approaching from a junction, from left or right, and it'll take the appropriate action. Parking sensors. I mean, it doesn't need a conventional grill, so that also makes way for the charging point. Now you can home charge, you can also type 2, and when it comes to rapid charging, the likelihood is it's going to be a 50 kilowatt, and in that case, it's just over an hour for say 80%. I think the main thing that appeals to me about this is, it's not the same as the Sportage, it's not the same as the Sorento, but it just brings across some of the features, it's still got its own identity. And one thing that really steps a Kia into the future, their brand new logo. Yes, you loved or hated it at the beginning, I thought, yeah. That's how it should look. The other one, it just wouldn't work on this. Now the Nero was always a rather impressive looking vehicle. But this, it just blows it out of the water. Fat flared arches. Semi clamshell bonnet. Big windscreen, more safety at the top. And we certainly chose the right colours. It's sporty yet off-roady. I mean, just take a look at the cladding. It's such a great combination. Now you've got a slightly raised ride height, 17 inch wheels but no doors that cover the sills. Power folding door mirrors and blind spot detection. And that will also display in your hood. Now a lot of vehicles like this normally have chrome. Ours has a smoked chrome and I think it really offsets the black. It's got great proportions and it doesn't matter which angle you look at it from. Let's take a look inside. So we've got keyless entry and colour coded door handles. Well the door opens nice and wide and soft touches. I do like the layout of this door card. And I can see at a glance we've got electric seats with memory function and lumbar support. Well, it looks simplicity to climb into. 
Yes, absolutely no problems. My word, you can tell winter's kicking in. It's getting rather cold. With that in mind, I do have a heated steering wheel and heated seats. They're three stage and they're also ventilated too. Ooh. So this is where it bursts into life. Row trees and look, this is now illuminated. It looks extremely minimalist. Also, this is illuminated. It's the soft touches. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. The previous one was looking a little old hat. You can see the cluster that you see in the EV6. Everything else is just rather simple, very minimalist. Funky center console, piano black. You can disable your parking sensors and you've got your cameras. Electronic handbrake and lots of practicality, including these cup holders, we're done. Center armrest, and yeah, it's just wide enough for you and your passenger. Everything does feel very modern in here, with one exception, the 1990s size sunroof. You expect a panoramic. I mean, it does the job perfectly. Now everything's trimmed very nicely. Great mix of materials. And it's not just that, it also includes a fair bit of sustainability. This headliner. It's made from recycled wallpaper. I suppose you can kind of tell it's a bit different. Now, when it comes to the seats, they're comfortable, they're supportive, they've got lots of functionality. But the other thing is, koalas would be gnawing at this. And that's because they're made from eucalyptus leaves. Hmm, rather tasty snack. I'm sure they've done something with it and made it more, well, seaty. And also the layout of the headrest. And Annabelle assures me, this is better for women's buns, etc, etc. I have no clue what she's talking about, but you get the gist. I've also got an airbag in it as well. Now, one thing that threw me, and uh, threw Annabelle mightily too, is this. Now, it's not really that complex, but the thing is, you can miss it quite easily. Dual functionality. This morning, totally out of the blue, I thought, oh, I'm going to run my fingers across it. And I just happened to clip this button, and then you realise that when you've got it on this, you can turn up the volume, like so. Got map, navigation, radio, media, setup. Or, you can turn up the heat of your climate control. You've got navigation, you've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. By the way, it's nice and responsive. Pretty damn quick, too. You can see EV, map, setting. And also, you can connect it to your app. Now, the app gives you all the information, like status, you can plan charges, you can see whether the vehicle's locked, etc, etc. And you can have your sounds of nature. You've got lively forest, ocean waves, warm fireplace. Let's have a bit of crackling, shall we? Rainy day. Hmm. Now, that's the thing about the Kia sound system. It's, it's far more than a sound system. And when it comes to the speakers, the Harman Kardon too. Moving to the cluster. Well, it's nice and straightforward. It's digital analog. And you can see when it's in the charge section, you've got your driving modes here. And depending on which mode you're in, depends on the color. Fuel computer in the middle, and it'll show you things like your media, what your powertrain is doing, etc., etc. But if you want to know more about your powertrain, you can start playing around with things like smart recuperation and battery conditioning. And it does have vehicle to load and some other tricks up its sleeve. We haven't got a heat pump, but you can get one. Now we've got a 12 volt, a USB and a USB-C and a wireless charging pad. It's nice to see that the rotary selectors return too. So you've got reverse, neutral, drive and press the middle for park. I've got decent headroom, even with a sunroof. I'm rather comfortable at six foot three. Legroom, yes. And the padded armrest. Reach and rake in the steering wheel. All in all, it's a rather nice driving position. And to be honest, I love it. But I did like the previous gen. I just like this far, far more. They've simplified things that you didn't know you really needed, <laughs> in a word. And yes, you can power fold your door mirrors for when you're on a narrow road. Just press this button. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can tow. Okay, let's take a look in the back. The contrast of colors on this really work, especially with the fact that you can actually choose what color you want this. There is a palette, same with obviously exterior colors. These are rather fancy. Okay, let's take a look at the rear. Well, the door opens nice and wide. And, yeah, this is hard. Also, it's one big chunky piece of plastic. It would have been nice to see an insert at this. Lovely and padded. And, more to the point, you have a heated seat. Absolutely no problem. You'll probably notice this seat is a little further forward. And that's because when you climb in and out, it does reset. So I've just rectified that. I've got decent legroom. I can get my feet under the seats just. 
absolutely no transmission tunnel, meaning you can tell that it's built on a new platform. The other thing about the vehicle is you've got more cabin space. So the rear passengers, it's far more roomy than the previous gen and it all adds to greater cabin comfort. You've got rather large side windows and that's the front and the rear. So many vehicles now have slimmed it down so you can have a more sloping roofline. Whereas Nero hasn't done that. It's nice to see you've got a light headliner too. A center light here. Map pockets with springiness and more to the point, there's two. And you've got USB-Cs located here on the side of the seats and a set of vents. Isofix points, you've got comfortable supportive seats. They're not the bucketiest, but the backrest angle well, it makes it well, a comfortable position, especially when you combine that with your padded armrest and your heated seat. And of course, the pull down armrest. It's interesting to feel that this is all hard though, but it's nice to see you've got a recess section for your knees. Headroom, well, it's six foot three. I'm sat, well, I'm sat how I'd sit, to be honest. And I've got about an inch clearance, which isn't bad. The bottom line is I'm comfortable at my size and height. Once again, you've got a mix of materials and colours. And the thing is, it feels good quality. It's nice and plush. And a nice boing. Okay, now when you look at the front and the side, it looks far more sleek. So it makes perfect sense that they've done that to the rear. For example, the flow of the rear lenses. It's genius to relocate the brake lights and LEDs up to there. This big sporty spoiler. And with essentially a full bar brake light. Once again, they've gone for a minimalist look, but they've also kept some classic design principles like this. I'm a fan of this rear diffuser styling, especially with the silver. Yes, it's a rather impressive looking vehicle. And on top of that, you've got rear parking sensors, rear cross traffic alert, and a reversing camera. And before we take a look in the boot, don't forget, you get seven year warranty. So we've got a power tailgate. Now, dependent on which model you go for, including the powertrain, if you go for the hybrid, they've actually done some jiggling around here and moved the 12 volts, and in turn, that's increased the boot space. And you've got extra storage under here too. Your home charger, your Type 2. As this is a press car, we get everything. So you've got extra storage points left and right, and 60, 40 folding seats, and a boot light on this side. It's nice and light, and all that helps with economy. Nice and easy to remove these too. When we went on a road trip, we managed to get suitcases, cameras, bags, you name it. You'll easily get your week shop in here and say a suitcase, quite a decent size, to be honest. To drop the seats, literally lift this flap and push forward. They don't lay entirely flat, but this carpet does cover the gap and it's velcroed down and it increases the boot space, well, exponentially. Easily get a mountain bike in there. I almost forgot, we have a rather nice heads up display. Now it's not a bit of plastic either. Displays right onto the windscreen, it'll give you things like your speedo, your adaptive cruise, and even better than that, it'll give you navigation. Let's take a look under the bonnet. So, ah, push this left and oh, love it. <gasps> Is this a frunk? Oh, yes, we have a frunk as well. With a rather natty net. I do like that kind of thing. Nice and easy to see where to top up your fluids. And, well, it doesn't matter about the weight. Closing it, nice and easy. On the road again. Welcome aboard the Kia Nero EV, then you on the And we're traveling down to Cardiff. It's tech loaded. Safety and convenience, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, AEB, collision detection, collision mitigation. The, the biggest challenge you've got with this is, the first Kia Nero was an amazing vehicle. The one thing that you could always say about it was, when you had that range, you actually had that range. It wasn't going to drop 50 or 60 miles across, say, flat roads. And with this, it seems even better. Mr. De Niro would be proud. That was the regen stopping. So yes, you can adjust your regen with the paddles on the back of the steering wheel. Inside the cabin as well, there's quite a few changes. It feels well planted at all times, but I suppose that's down to the weight of the vehicle. Anything with heavy batteries means it handles exceptionally well. And the thing is, the body will move on top of it, but there's no excessive body roll, so it makes it comfortable, yet nimble and agile, and it gives you a great driving experience. Steering, well, superb. You can tell there's been some upgrades. It feels more linear, yet it still is direct. 
and it gives good feedback. All in all, impressive. It offers comfortable suspension and I'd say it's bounced rather than bump. The thing is, it holds the road well. So yes, joining to motorways, racetracks, absolutely no problem. However, have that's you noticed not what we're doing this journey for, is it? No. Put it back into eco now. Excellent. Very little tire noise. And I can't, I don't think I can hear any wind noise, can It's you? very refined in here. Too easy to speed in this. But we're now in charge, travelling at 71. And we've just gained another mile, so we now have an eight mile gap. So you can recoup on motorways, travelling at motorway speed. Woohoo! Considering we're on an incline, it's only dropped on the two miles travelling at 70. Yeah. That's not bad. That's nice and detailed. Hang on, there's a fan on. Let's turn that off. Ooh, you've just turned that off and it's gone up seven miles on range. The thing is, it is practically giving us mile for mile at this speed, isn't it, on these conditions? That's what staggers me, yeah. Which is brilliant, Round absolutely 70 brilliant. 70 is mile for mile, if not maybe 1.1, 1.2. It just takes away that level of anxiety knowing that you are pretty much getting mile for mile. You don't you get know that's anxiety, what, Exactly. You, you, you never know got what, it in the previous Exactly. Trip. Safety doing its job, you can hear a little bit of wind noise. Not surprising if you look right. But you might hear a little bit, you can't feel it though. No, well I can feel the lane keep assist mitigating it ever so slightly. Every time it goes one way, it just pulls it back. One hour 43 to 100% mm -hmm. and 42 minutes to 80%. Oh. So that extra 20% takes an extra hour. Wow. Our advice on this is charge 10 to 80%. We've just had a quick charge. It's given us a buffer of 30 miles. Plenty to get down to Cardiff without having to worry about range anxiety. I'm glad you've got regen in this and the fact that you can adjust it with the paddles because it means when I'm in traffic like this I can just back off and it'll just brake nicely. But you can do essentially one pedal drive if you put it into sport, it gets far weightier. And even with some differences in the speed of driving that you've been doing, mm. we've managed to keep over our 30 mile buffer which is what we wanted to do. It's been done easily and there's been no range anxiety at all. No, no, it's, it's... <gasps> We're in glass tunnel. 